So, You want me to move that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, a lot of uh, that, that particular way of doing the Amarashi, or following up on the ground, the shoulder is so bad. You can't hold it. Okay. I'm trying to exaggerate. You can't. There are there are more than a minute ago. Professor Esk was pretty good. So, what do we really have here? And it's aggravating the natural curve. What we have is, is he's already stri struck up here. Force the strike to open your hand, and you can close here. So I have this, so I try to use it. But this is real mechanical and effective. All he's got to do is shrug his shoulder. Just shrug it. You just shrug. I've got him up here, right? And I'm pushing his hip forward. <coughs> shrug your shoulder. And that's it. Now, there's nothing there anymore. Bend your elbow. Or just slide it down. It's not strong enough. Yeah, it's like it won't just be From this position up here, okay, go ahead and put pressure on him. See, he's got to take that way back. All I do is shrug my shoulder, and that's it. There's nothing there anymore. And as for the choke, there never was anything there. At the base of the skull, there is a set of three or four series of muscles. I asked you to read that because I bitched and moaned and screamed until there was a generic enough description to allow me to do it the way I was first taught it and the way that I have a picture of Okazaki doing this technique. Okay? The throw, the strike, the throw is the same. You come underneath and you can flatten the man down here. Now, you can't shrug his shoulder and get out of the arm. Your hand comes across. You broke this if you did the, the, the strike right. In order to put pressure on this arm, you've got to stabilize the shoulder. So you get up and you drop the heel of your hand right onto where you broke it. Now from here, there's no problem breaking his arm. My fingers come across and I grab my little larynx and I just crush it in my hand. And this conforms to what James just broke. Apply a choke with your right hand, arm bar across your thigh to the left. It doesn't have to be this thing up on one knee. I know that's what you've all been taught, but I'll just tell you flat out it doesn't work. This one works. And it meets the definition. A little bit, but see, it's just a matter of, again, if you look at the mechanics, um, I don't know where to show this from, but it's okay, I'm standing here to punch it. My first move is this anyway. Okay. If I step straight in, he needs me. Okay, if I just block to the outside and step in like this, I just get checked. I think I even have to do it if I'm moving fast, whack, you know, do it to myself. So the first thing that happens when he punches and I block is that my hips turn. Then I break his collarbone, and it's not this. He's got about three days to block that. Okay, it's this. The assumption is, is that I'm in a defensive stance anyway, so my hands are up. So as he punches, that hand just cocks back a little. From right here, look at this leg. It's bent. Okay, my hips are turned facing that way. My hips turn, this leg thrusts straight, and this hand comes sailing across and right into his collarbone. If I was doing this to Ward, I wouldn't just break his collarbone. I mean, you know, I probably would hit him hard enough that way, driving off my hip, turning into him, to break it more than once, and really start jamming those fragments back. You do something like this, you're not going to do much to it. Yamarashi means a storm in the mountain or an avalanche. You should feel like you've just been in an avalanche. Boom. I drive. That's the power from my throat. It's from my legs and my hips, not from my arm.
So it's again, it's a matter of distance. If you look at, he, he's going to hit me, okay? He's got to be there to hit me. He can't hit me from there. Okay? So it's not, it's a matter of where the real distance for doing the technique is. He's got to be close enough that he makes contact with me to do that when he punches me. So you're in close. He punches here, here. I've got to be close enough to hit him. Okay? And my hips turn. This comes up and I just drive straight through. I'll come down. And I'm right there. This leg just comes right in. My hand never leaves his collar, never leaves yeah. his arm. I sit back, come out here, grab his throat. You know what, where I'm sitting, I'm back here. <coughs> the, way that, the way that most people teach it, where are you? You're up here. Reach for my face with your other hand. Then, you're not getting the bars, so you're all going to now with my <laughs> this, also, you come right around and grab that larynx and squeeze it as hard as you can. And you try to crack it. And lay it in the front of the belt. If you're strong enough, fine. If you're not strong enough, it's real painful. With a natural reaction, he doesn't know how to tap, right? What's your natural reaction? From here. Or grab my hand and pull it off. Okay. That's fine. That buys me the time to break this elbow. That's what I really want to do anyway. Then I can let go of this. I come out here and I grab this thumb. And I twist this arm up behind his back. This is broken. This is broken up here. With a little luck, I compound this one when I twist the arm. Okay. This is real thin. There's nothing between the bone and the skin here. And I'm moving this whole shoulder. I'm crying with this one. And then I, for good measure, like I said, I jam that elbow up. This is broken too, right? And I get up and get ready for the next attack. <laughs> you break that elbow and leave it out straight. You might get up and try to use the arm. You break it and you twist it up behind his back. And then he's probably out of the Okay? Make an old man happy. Do it once each. 